As you may have heard, a Pennsylvania grand jury recently released a report about the child sex abuse scandal in the Catholic Church. They only looked at six of the eight dioceses in the state and still produced a report that was more than 1,300 pages long and implicated more than 300 priests and bishops and other Catholic leaders. Many of them are dead. Some of the stories were heavily redacted because the priests are alive and haven't been charged with a crime. And in some cases, the statute of limitations has long expired. But this was always about documenting the abuses more than anything else. When you read this report and realize it's just one group of priests in one state, you have to wonder what the stories would look like if a similar document was produced across the country, if not the world. And I want to tell you some of what they found. Not because it's disturbing, and and it is really disturbing, but because this stuff had been going on for decades. The church knew about it. They, They covered it up. They transferred priests to different parishes. They told families they would take care of the problem and never did. If you are giving money to the Catholic Church or you attend Mass or you even call yourself a Catholic at this point, you should know what it is you're supporting. So here's just a sampling of what was in that report. And if this is too much to take, click away now. I mean, this is your warning. One priest fondled at least 12 different boys by saying he was just showing them how to check for cancer. One priest raped an underage girl, got her pregnant, then paid for her abortion. His bishop later wrote in a letter, This is a very difficult time in your life, and I realize how upset you are. I, too, share your grief. That letter was addressed to the priest, not the victim. One priest admitted to molesting approximately 35 boys because sex with girls is sinful, but raping boys apparently didn't violate them. One priest tried having sex with a 17-year-old at a high school he worked at by saying God wanted them to express love for each other that way. And when she said God would punish them, he told her, there is no hell. One priest forced a nine-year-old boy to give him a blowjob, then washed his mouth out with holy water to purify him. There was a priest who dragged a child across a room by his underwear and beat him with a metal cross. He eventually quit the priesthood, but not before receiving a letter of recommendation from the church for his new job at Disney World. One priest molested a 12-year-old boy. That victim is 83 now, and he said he has fought in wars. But because of what that priest did to him, he could never hug or kiss his own children who were boys. He can't shake hands with men to this day. He can't even see male doctors or dentists. One priest was known to take pictures in a boy's locker room and maintained a book of crotch shots. One priest fondled a boy and stuck his finger up the kid's ass. Then he said to the boy that if their secret ever got out, the child and his mother would both burn in hell. And then he gave the boy a nickel. One priest raped a seven-year-old in the hospital just after she had her tonsils removed. He raped her again when she was 19 and pregnant. One priest inappropriately touched several little girls, and when confronted about it by his diocese, he admitted it, adding, it was when I was going through a touchy-feely time in my life. One priest abused an 11-year-old girl wrestling with her on the floor at her family's home when her father wasn't around. And one time, when she resisted, he said, I like a fighter. One priest fondled a young boy on a Ferris wheel during a church festival. And the boy couldn't get off the ride because the priest told the operator to keep the ride going three times longer than it should have. This is just a sample. It is so much worse than anyone imagined. And by the way, 24 hours after that report was released, do you know what the Vatican said about it? Nothing. They didn't even issue a statement. Now, 
I would also point out that the grand jury said that the reason these crimes were covered up for so long is because church leaders appeared to be using, and I'm quoting, a playbook for concealing the truth. What did that playbook involve? One, they used euphemisms. Instead of saying rape, they said inappropriate contact or boundary issues. Two, they didn't investigate these allegations with trained professionals. Instead, they let clergy members ask the victims inadequate questions before judging their own colleagues. Three, they evaluated priests at church-run treatment centers. Four, if a priest was removed, they never said why. They just told the congregation he was on sick leave or something. Five, they kept providing priests with living expenses regardless of the allegations. There were no real consequences. Six, they transferred the priest if his crime became public knowledge. Seven, they never told the police because they wanted to keep it in-house. It is it's all disturbing. If you saw that movie Spotlight, I mean, it was all about this kind of scandal in one large city. Well, this report was about the scandal covering most of one state. And the details are awful. How many lives did the Catholic Church ruin over the course of decades? How much trauma did these priests inflict? You know, and, and obviously the church has a lot to do in the wake of all these accusations, but many of the people involved, at least peripherally with these scandals, are still around and still in the church's hierarchy. Do you think the Pope is just going to get rid of everybody? No. Nothing will change unless the people who support the church get out. They need to stop giving the church money. They need to stop calling themselves Catholic as if it's something to be proud of. They need to stop sending their kids to a Catholic school if they can help it. I mean, you can believe in God without calling yourself a Catholic. And I, I think people walking away is the only thing that will push the church to change. Because you know what didn't pressure the church to prevent these scandals? The victims. They didn't matter. My name is Hemant Mehta, and I write at FriendlyAtheist.com. What do you want to see a video about? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll be sure to check it out. And don't forget to subscribe.